What's going on, Danny? Thank you for sending me your request uh, and for being here. I appreciate you so much. Uh, in case you're new, hit subscribe, stick around. The way that we typically do things, I'm going to read your dream and we'll talk about the symbols, kind of what they mean, and then how you can apply that to your life. So uh, you can get the messages your unconscious mind's trying to send you. So here we go. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for taking time to interpret my dream. Of course. I just had this dream last night, so it's very fresh in my memory. I'm bilingual and my main language is English, but my whole dream was mostly in Spanish. I don't know if that means anything. It could. Uh, it's kind of kind of depends on you, like what, what that means. Um, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. I was in my apartment with my sister who had come over to hang out since she hadn't gone to school. I live with my boyfriend, but he was at work. The apartment was mostly the same, but with some few differences. The bathroom had two doors instead of one. The windows of the apartment had a view to the back entrance to the apartment, which does not exist in real life. The apartment had a telephone doorbell to the back entrance where people would ring to get in the apartment complex. And there was a male Caucasian neighbor who had three kids who would play at a balcony we had full view of. They would be so loud that it would disrupt my everyday life in the apartment. I was actually quite annoyed with them because of it. So uh, let's pause there because it's a bit of a long dream. So I want to hit the symbols as we go through. Your apartment, symbol for your comfort zone. Symbol for your mind, kind of your uh, routine, right? The way that you typically think about things, behave, go about stuff. Comfort zone, comfortable. It's where you live. Uh, and then this, um, the apartment being a little bit different, that's normal. Um, that can happen a lot in dreams. Um, but the neighbor, there it is. I, I found it in the text. Sorry. The neighbor who has the three kids, that's going to be anxiety, right? So that's going to be, uh, specifically anxiety, stress, just annoyance about the things that you have to do, but particularly, uh, related to kind of responsibilities, right? And just kind of the noise of living. Sometimes you have to do things that are just kind of annoying, you know, like we have to deal with you know, traffic and taxes and emails and things. And, you know, it's just kind of frustrating, but it's part of part of life. That's what that really is going to represent for you. Now, this view of the back door, which kind of becomes um, important later, really is going to be a sense for your unconscious, right? These are these are kind of the things it's the back, right? It's behind. It's sort of in the shadows, right? It's um, oftentimes when people have a house, they don't often use the front door. They typically use the back door. Uh, the front door is more for show. It's formal entrance. You got your informal entrance. So this back door, you've got a window, a view of your unconscious entrance where things are kind of coming in. Now, this is also a part of your creativity, right? So your creativity kind of comes in through the back door as well. Okay, continuing on. While me and my sister were hanging out, the doorbell rang and I answered. I was confused as to what the noise of the ringer was because, like I said, that doesn't exist in my real apartment. The Caucasian neighbor who could see into my apartment and apparently hear what was going on motioned to me to answer the ring and pointed to the back entrance. I realized he was helping me figure out what was going on and really appreciated the help, even felt bad about being annoyed with him and his family. Let's, let's pause there. Let's pause there. So um, sometimes those things that are annoying are actually helpful, actually good for us. You know, that happens, right? And sometimes we feel guilty for that. So that, that part makes sense. You can kind of see how the symbol is sort of maintaining validity throughout, right? But then uh, the doorbell rings and you don't really know how to let things into your unconscious, right? This is kind of a, this is the symbol here is there are opportunities that knock at your life, but they're kind of, they're not formal opportunities. Like if you had an interview and you had a business offer, you'd know how to handle that. But sometimes there's these little subtle opportunities like, oh, I could do this. I could do that. I could make my life better in these ways that often get missed and you're confused. You don't know how to get outside of your comfort zone to answer that door from your unconscious. That will become apparent here in a minute. When I checked who rang the bell, it was a mail carrier with a package. Opportunity. It knocks, right? Sometimes it's a mailman. Package is a gift, opportunity, a message from outside, from your unconscious coming to your back door. Uh, it was for my mom, but accepted a signature from my sister to receive the package. I don't remember what the package was, but when I took the package from the man, I remember him flirting with me, right? opportunities from the unconscious, even even relational, romantic opportunities. Now, the package was for your mom, right? And so there can be kind of this connection, a symbol mom is 
uh, sort of the caretaker. Again, this is kind of like nurturance safety zone. Oftentimes, mom can take care of things that we don't feel really prepared for. So the message even was for your mom to figure out, and then maybe you get a piece of it or whatever, right? So I'm, I'm getting this feeling for inside of you. There's kind of this, um, if things aren't very formal, if you have to go outside your comfort zone, that can be uncomfortable. And that's for all of us. So again, symbol throughout. That's going to get interesting here in a minute. Uh, when I received another ring, I answered it and it was an eerie sounding man. It sounded wrong to begin with. So I was already apprehensive. The conversation went as follows. Male, male voice says, hello. You say, how can I help you? Male says, can you open the door? You say, I don't know. I said, do I know you? The male says, I need something. Open the door. You say, what do you need? I, uh, need shampoo. Open the door. Sorry. I can't help you. And immediately you hung up. I was very uncomfortable with the situation. He proceeded to bang the door and demand to be let in. I was looking out the window, noticing that there was another opening to the apartment, which he could easily come through, but wouldn't. I was scared and wanted to contact the apartment security, but I didn't have their number, right? Okay, so let's pause here. What is this symbol? This is a symbol for, now remember, dreams. One of the rules of dreams is all the things are you. There's parts of yourself that are trying to come out that want to come in through your back door, right? That want to come into your awareness, into your comfort zone, but sometimes they're scary, right? This is particularly a sort of mysterious, right? Mysterious because you don't really know it well. It's not mysterious in nature, but it's a very assertive, aggressive, masculine part of yourself, uh, which is uncomfortable for you. Maybe it's something you haven't really explored much inside of yourself. Sorry, my phone made noises. <clears throat> and well, that can be that can be strange. This is remember, you're in your comfort zone. This is trying to take you out of your comfort zone. So you say, I was scared and wanted to contact the apartment security, but didn't have their number. Reaching out for help, feeling like you can't get help, you can't communicate what's going on. I remember my boyfriend, uh, I remembered my boyfriend did, so I called him quickly. For some reason, I wasn't able to get directly in contact with him and had to go through some assistant from work to connect me to him. Your boyfriend, actually, the reason you're in a relationship with your boyfriend is your boyfriend kind of takes care of what this uh, shadowy man is trying to do as part of you. So there's the shadowy man part of yourself, assertive, aggressive nature in yourself that makes you uncomfortable. Your boyfriend sort of takes care of those things that you don't want to take care of in yourself for you. That's why you're in a relationship with him. <clears throat> but he wasn't good at his job and wasn't able to connect me. This is something where you're not able to uh, have your boyfriend help you take care of this. At some point, some workers noticed the commotion happening in the back entrance and decided to check it out. Remember, these are now these are all parts of you. So all these other parts of you are coming to help you out in this situation. Uh, I yelled at them from my apartment as to what was going on, and they were trying to take hold of this man. These are all these different pieces of you, all these different roles you play in your life trying to fix this problem. But... They're not going to be able to. I had a feeling something was going to happen. So I went to my door and double locked it. This is you really trying to stay inside your comfort zone. Uh, my door handle locked and an extra lock at the top and then ran back to my room to see what was going on. The man knocked down the door and the wall around it, right? This is a part of yourself you can't get rid of. It's coming in whether you like it or not. I immediately ran silent to the kitchen in my apartment to grab a knife. I wanted to grab one of those knives with a pointy edge, but instead grabbed a sharp edge used for stakes. Now see, this is what's cool. You can see how you inside the dream are becoming more assertive, more aggressive, but still in a timid, shy, scared way. And so um, you can kind of see how this is building through this part of yourself that you don't want to confront. The tension is kind of mounting inside of yourself. This is oftentimes what happens in therapy. As soon as I grabbed the knife, I heard him slam his body on the door, trying to open it. The double lock had worked to keep him from coming in. I jumped and I felt sick to my stomach. I was scared that he would harm my sister. I didn't yell and I just walked silently to my room where my sister was waiting. The man started yelling behind the door, trying to get in. Open up. And he says some bad words. Open up. I'm going to kill you. You bad word. <clears throat> My plan was to escape with my sister through my windows, but I abruptly woke up. When I woke up, I felt so anxious. My heart was beating so fast. So what's the solution with this? You got a good idea of what this dream's about. The solution is those things that are undeveloped in you are going to make you afraid when you see them in the real world, when you see them in others, when you see them outside of your comfort zone. 
The solution is you have to build an aggressive, assertive, strong, confident defense, right? Best offense or the best defense is a good offense. So how do you defeat a big person who's scary and wants to beat you up? You beat them up first, right? And so there's this part of you, this assertive, aggressive, confident part that's kind of underdeveloped. And your mind's trying to say, we're scared that someone's going to come along who is assertive and aggressive, who is more confident, has a little bit better self-esteem perhaps, and they're going to hurt us because they have something that we don't. And even though we don't want to get outside of our comfort zone and recognize that this is something we struggle with, this is like the internal parts of yourself having a conversation with themselves. Even though we don't want to get out of our comfort zone and recognize that, um, something in our life is going to come down and beat down that door because there's a part of yourself that needs to be developed. So listen, Danny, it's scary. I get it. I get it. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you some encouragement. Don't be afraid. This is a part of you. This is a symbol for you. There might not be anything in your life right now that's going on um, that is inherently dangerous, but it's a warning. Hey, we need to grow. Otherwise, we're going to be in danger. And that's okay. I'm glad your mind is telling you these things. So if I can help in any way, if life coaching is part of uh, what you need to kind of talk you through that and go deeper into this dream, uh, let me know. Happy to help you in that way. But I always recommend a good mental health counselor to work through these things as well. Um, so hope that gives you some peace. Hope that helps you out. And uh, Danny, I look forward to talking to you again soon. You take care. Peace.